Scrappy peeps, it's Scrap Stash Saturday. Welcome to Scrap Stash Saturday. I'm Adele from Inky Quill, and this is a series where I use my scraps from my stash to make a scrapbook page. So today I'm doing a 6x12 layout, and I've still got a bit of a croaky voice, sorry, still getting over a bit of a cold. And I'm actually using a leftover sticker packet. So these were some cute little Heidi Swap stickers that I got. And um, I used all the stickers up and I just really liked the shapes that were left on them. There was like some labels and some circles and things like that. So I, I thought I might challenge myself to use it in the layout. And that's my challenge for you. Try and find a sticker sheet, a leftover sticker packaging and use it in a layout, an art journal page, a project life spread, a index card, an iCAD, whatever you want. So the first thing I'm doing is I'm using some um, American Crafts cardstock and I'm just gessoing it with some clear gesso and waiting for that to dry. And then I'm getting out my distress stain. So this is in... Oh, it's in that, is it spun sugar? I think it's spun sugar. It's the really light pink one. And so I'm wetting my cardstock with some water and then using the packaging technique, which is the easiest technique. I know I seem to say this a lot lately, but this one is honestly the easiest one you can do. You can do it with watercolor. You can do it with gelatos. You can do it with mist sprays. You can do it with um, distress ink pads. You can do it with stains. Just put some on some plastic packaging and smush it into the paper. <laughs> it's that simple. So what I'm doing is I decide to do another coat apparently. I did film this one a little while ago. So it will be a reminder to me what I did too. <laughs> but I did another coat because this one I didn't um, dilute with water. So the first coat I did dilute with water and it gave it like a really soft watercolory look. Um, this one, the second one I didn't because I wanted a bit of depth. Now, I completely was impatient and, as you can see, had a bit of a fail. I cut my paper while it was still a little bit wet and blades and wet paper, don't, they're not friends. They're, they're actually quite enemy with each other. They don't like each other. So I cover it up because my motto is, I'm going to get this printed someday. You can always cover it up. Now, look at that freaking tape. Look at that. Guess who did that? Wasn't me. Wasn't Aaron. The other alive thing in our house. Wasn't the hermit crabs. Wasn't Leo the fish. Although sometimes he stares at us like he wants to kill us. It was the bunnies. I believe it was Frida because she's been very suspicious around my desk lately. And she's gotten into my stash of tape. And she's taken like bites out of every roll of tape. So none of them peel off properly anymore. <laughs> Oh dear. So I just put a little piece of paper on the side to cover up that that horrible fail of cutting the paper down the side. And now I'm sticking on the sticker sheet. And then I'm using some Color Blast in Bling, which is their gold color, over a teeny tiny little heart stencil, stencil which I believe is a Simon Says stamp. I got it a long time ago, as in a year or more ago. So I'm not sure if you can still get it there, but it's one of my favorite stencils because it just has these really tiny, petite little hearts and it just comes in handy for backgrounds. And then, like I always do, I smush off the rest of it in my Use It Up journal where I just put any leftover paint, anything, and then when it comes, when I feel like doing something arty but don't feel like doing an entire page, I just pull this book open and... 80% of the pages are already done with the background. I just have to go over with maybe some um, paint pens or a focal image or something like that. And it's done. So it's important when you use the Color Blast, which is like a, a glimmery texture paste, um, that you clean your stencil right away because it will harden and deform the shape of your stencil, if that makes sense. So it'll cling to the sides of the cutouts and make it not as clear as it usually is. So I dried it with my heat gun and I'm ready to roll. So this photo, this um, layout's called Toast Time. And this is what every morning in our house usually looks like. So Aaron makes my toast every morning because he spoils me rotten. And um, the bunnies, particularly Poppet, Frida's a bit of a ditz. Frida 
Frida just often doesn't know what's going on around her, um, but Poppet does. Poppet's on it. So Poppet sits at Aaron's feet every single morning and watches him make the toast. And then as soon as he starts cutting it, she knows that's her cue to run as fast as she can onto me on the couch and sit on my lap and wait for to toast because she does get a little bit of toast crust. I know they're not meant to have it. She's having it for five years. She's perfectly fine. It's just like a little bit of, it's just like people aren't really meant to have a lot of junk food. You know, it's okay. They're bunnies and they're mine and I, I don't mind giving them a tiny bit of toast just to just to make their morning that much more awesome. So here I am just putting some scraps. Now, one of the scraps um, actually had some circles cut out of it and it was a fluke that it was the exact size that I needed for the mat. So I'm a stickler for keeping scraps, um, but I do have a promise with myself that this box can't get any bigger. So if I get to a point where I can't fit any more, any more scraps in, then no more scraps go in and I have to go through it. But I, I allow myself one box of scraps. Then I'm digging through. This is this little box thing. I kind of use it as my like my texture box. So I put in doilies and glassine bags and brown paper bags and tissue paper and all those fun sorts of things that I can use for layering. So I'm just searching through and I grab some pink tissue paper. Do I end up using? I don't know if I end up using the pink tissue paper. I don't know if I do. I'm desperate for black and white polka dot. Look at what I'm doing. Oh, it's so pathetic. It's so stingy of me to cut that bit out. <laughs> I'm desperate for some black and white um, spotted tissue paper. This is from um, someone sent me a package and it had the Felicity Jane tissue paper around it. Um, it was some stamps from Felicity Jane, I think it was. And they they included the tissue paper and I've been hoarding it so badly so if anyone knows where I can get white tissue paper with small black polka dots please fill me in because I desperately want some and that last that bit that I cut off it's all I've got left and I just sit and I just look at it because it's just too pretty and I can't bring myself to use it <laughs> so here I added a glassine bag just because I like the um I like it's kind of like vellum glassine it's but not as vellumy like not as clear <laughs> oh, Baron. <laughs> Aaron's laughing at my definitions in the background you know what I mean though don't you yeah so it's not as like uh slick oh but it is kind of slick but it's a different type of slick anyway go into deep philosophy of the difference between vellum and glassine so I wanted to put this on foam just to bump it up a little bit so that it could separate it from that sticker packaging and I think I'm done with my layers but then I feel like this side part is a little bit it needs something else it can't just have that pink streak because it looks like the pink paper is not meant to be there which technically it's not but I don't want people to actually realize that so I'm going through and just cutting some really thin strips of different papers and putting them on top and I do end up putting a few little tiny embellishments on there as well so anyway um I really, really, really recommend having a look at your packaging in a new way. So you can see here, I've used scrap packaging in three different ways. I've used the tissue paper that someone sent me with a package wrapped in it. I always keep tissue paper that people send me. And um, if something comes in like nice brown paper, I always keep that as well. So I've used the packaging, for, the tissue paper packaging from a gift. I've used the glassine bag, which was packaging from my Scraptastic kit. So I always keep the bags that come in uh, when I buy kits because they just, they even make good little pockets to slip like a, a journaling card. If you don't want to have your journaling out for everyone to see, you just tuck it in there. And the other way that I've used packaging is through that sticker um, packaging leftover bit. You know, the, the outside bit of the sticker. And so that little circle was actually the test run. I got the, oh, what's it called? I've had a complete mental blank, heat wave. I got the heat wave tool where you can use this heated pen looking thing. Oh, I'm doing a bit of a clap there. Um, a heated pen looking thing to um, 
writer on gold foil and it transfers the gold foil onto your paper and I've been loving it I'm going to do an up close and personal on it soon I think um, but that hello was just my test you know my tester and I just cut it into a circle to use as an embellishment so it's such an easy embellishment to do just write on a circle <laughs> so I typed my embellish my journaling up on some vellum not glassine vellum this time and see they're best friends they're both on the layout together and what I do is vellum is very tricky to tape down without seeing the tape and I don't have vellum tape so um, what I decide to do is just staple one side and I staple it real good staple it real good that could be a song and then I just hope that it stays there pretty much <laughs> adding a couple of little enamel dots and I think this one's almost done please let me know in the comments below if you've tried a 6 by 12 um, layout insert they're really fun to do and a lot of people have asked me where I get the page protectors for the 6 by 12 pages from they're actually advertised for you can get some from the Project Life brand but these ones that I use are actually for thickers so they're used to store thickers and they'll be in the thickers section of your craft store so have a look there as well but it's just nice when you when you have a story or you have a picture that you don't want a big picture you just want to make it a small picture and you want to make a page but you don't want to make a huge page the 6x12 layout is really fun and it's a challenge because it's very skinny it's very long and skinny it's got a very different proportion than a normal like you know a4 piece of paper or something like that and the hands are out so I must be done oh this will pop it so I really like how this one turned out it was just it was kind of a mess at some point some things didn't work but I covered them up and made them work and it's just a really cute little um, page in my project life album so let me know in the comments below if you've tried the 6x12 size and also let me know in the comments below any ideas that you have for scrap stash saturday so anything you'd like to see me do with my scraps or any particular scraps that you'd like to see like if you would like to see um you know like textured paper or you know i don't know uh, scraps of alphabets anything let me know in the comments below what type of scraps you'd like me to use and i will see you all very very soon thanks for watching and i'll see you tomorrow bye <laughs>